In the southern interior region of British Columbia, the District of Lake Country's microhydro power plant is a successful green energy project. It began producing and supplying power into the BC Hydro Grid in June 2009 using infrastructure created on its existing drinking water and irrigation supply system. A microhydro project is the ability to take energy from, from water that's moving downhill under gravity and transform that energy that's in the water to electrical power and in, in our case here uh, when we looked at rebuilding uh, the, the largest of the water systems for the District of Lake Country, we made provisions to put in a, a microhydro plant. This um, entire project has been a keynote uh, with our council because it, it's green and clean energy, no impact on the environment making use of the existing infrastructures and it's what we're trying to do in our community is, is um, generate revenue and take care of the environment at the same time. The pipe that um, supplies the water to the community, we tapped off of that pipe and run the water through the hydro plant and then back into the reservoir and use it to supply the community. Within the plant, the, the water comes in, it then it's separated and it goes through two jets and these two jets shoot a very intense stream of water, spin the water wheel and that water wheel is connected to a shaft to a generator which spins and that generator makes electricity which goes out to the switchyard and then into the BC Hydro grid. The power plant produces enough energy to supply 400 homes annually, roughly, which is just under 4,000 megawatts of power. Uh, the, the revenue is between $350,000 and $400,000 a year, enough to pay off the, the debt for the plant and have surplus revenue, which the District of Lake Country has decided to put the surplus revenue into a capital account for future green projects and be more sustainable as time goes on. I think for uh, small communities to take on a, a fairly major project and sort of a, a little bit of um, diversion from what the municipalities are usually involved with, you need somebody that understands what the benefits are, what the uh, downside is, and Jack Allingham, our water manager at the time, was uh, phenomenal in staying with it and, and going after council. And people recognized that it uh, was something that should be done, it uh, could be done, and why not get on it and do it. Biggest barrier was the realization that, that a relatively small municipality could do a project like this and make it work. Mayor and council from the beginning wanted to do it. By the time the project was well underway, by far a majority of the people saw the, the benefits of it and began to realize that, hey, we could do it. In all measures, it's a positive. This was a revenue stream that's equivalent of um, about 4.8% taxation. So that's taxes we don't have to add on to residential property tax. So it, it's really been a great benefit for us. Opportunities are available for other communities in British Columbia that are looking for ways for economic development. I think sort of the, the greatest highlight, the biggest thrill, was the social, the economic and the environmental that are our three principles of operation. And in the interior where the pine beetle kills devastating watersheds, the social aspect of this is great because we generate revenue and uh, can use it for a number of projects that we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. My personal highlight was in the fall of 2011 when, when I was asked to do a detailed case study in review of the project after it had been operating a couple of years. The case study was funded by Green Energy as a Rural Economic Development Tool and administered by uh, the Southern Interior Beetle Action Coalition. 
and then be able to stand here and look, look out over the project uh, with a great sense of accomplishment.